Good morning, children. So today we come to the last part of the lesson, weather and climate, and that is precipitation. So today we will be learning in detail about precipitation. Now what is precipitation? Continuous condensation of water vapor in the air results in the formation of minute droplets of water. When these droplets join together, they become bigger drops, which become too heavy to float and they start falling down. This process is called precipitation. But you can also use or write a very simple definition and that is moisture received by the earth in any form is known as precipitation. Precipitation can be of four types. There are major four types of precipitation namely rain, snow, sleet and hail. Now of all these four, rainfall is the most common form of precipitation. So rainfall, what is rainfall? When the condensed water vapor in the clouds falls down in the form of water drops, it is known as rain. When the drops of rain are very small, they are known as a drizzle. So when the rainfall is very, very slow and it consists of very tiny droplets, it is known as a drizzle. So these are the basic five types of precipitation. Let us now learn in detail about these different types of precipitation. Now what is sleet? When rainfall is accompanied with snow, it is known as sleet. Hail. Hail normally occurs in the tropical region and it refers to the dropping of large sizes of ice on the earth on a very hot day and as far as snow is concerned it is the tiny flakes of ice which falls down in a very cold place when the temperature is below zero degree. A very interesting part of this precipitation is none of the snowflakes are of the same type. All snowflakes, each of them, are different from one another. Now, you have to learn about the types of rainfall. Now, basically, there are three types of rainfall. Convectional, relief or orographic and cyclonic. 
So let us learn first about convectional rainfall. Now convectional rainfall occurs in areas which is very hot, especially near the equator. So what happens near the equator? Every day there is rainfall and the rainfall is of a convectional type. This type of rainfall occurs because during the day the temperature becomes very high and it, led, it leads to the air near the ground to become warm and rise. Now when the air rises, it comes in contact with cold air, condenses and comes down as rainfall. Now this is a cyclic type of rainfall which occurs every day. And this type of rainfall is known as convectional rainfall. As far as relief rainfall or orographic rainfall is concerned, it normally occurs where there is a mountain or a hill near the side of an ocean. So warm air rises, comes in contact with cool air and heavy rainfall occurs on the windward side of the mountain. That is the wind, the side from where the wind is coming is known as the windward side. Once the rainfall is over, the air becomes warm and it slides down. So, this air which has now become warm goes to the other side of the mountain and slides down and does not bring much rainfall to the lee side or the rain shadow side of the mountain. The third type of rainfall is cyclonic. Now here the rainfall occurs because two different types of air masses come in contact with one another. Now due to this warm air mass coming close contact with the cool air mass or the cold air mass, what happens? The warm air being lighter will rise against the cold air mass. So when the warm air rises, this cold air con leads to the condensation of the warm air when it meets the cold air. And so rainfall occurs in this part of the region. That is why it is known as a cyclonic type of rainfall. Now rainfall is measured with the help of a rain gauge. You can see a glass container which is graduated and it is kept outside. It is always kept away from buildings or trees so that water from the building or the tree when it rains does not enter the rain gauge then it will give a distorted or a wrong reading. So a rain gauge is used for measuring the rainfall. It consists of a cylinder and a graduated glass. The rain get water gets collected and it is measured after 24 hours. The precautionary measure which is taken over here is that first they should be away from buildings or trees. Secondly, 
Wherever there is very heavy rainfall, the rain gauge is always kept on a platform so that water logging does not occur in the rain gauge because some water from the ground can also enter the rain gauge and then it will give a wrong or a distorted reading. Next we learn about a weather map. Now a weather map is a representation of the distribution of meteorological data of a given area of the earth's surface. It shows all the elements of weather represented by different kinds of symbols. Meteorologists use weather maps to show patterns in the data available. This helps them in forecasting of the weather. So here you can see a weather map, the map of India and it is showing what is the temperature like on in the month of June and also in the month of October and September. You can see lines over here about which I am going to talk now. Now these lines are known as isotherms. Isotherms are lines which join places having the same temperature. So here in the previous map you have seen that these lines which are in red, they are lines which are joining places having the same temperature on the day and the date is given June 5th. You can also see another line blue color. This is also another isotherm which is joining the same places and it is showing the temperature on the 15th of October. Apart from isotherms, these are the lines with joint places having the same rainfall. They are known as isoheights. So you can see over here lines joining places which receive the same amount of rainfall and they are known as isoheights. They show the distribution of rainfall on a map. So students, throughout this chapter of weather and climate, we have seen several pictures, images, photographs, diagrams, maps, which tell us how important weather and climate is in our lives. They help us to know what type of a condition will prevail today or maybe a few hours from now. They also help us to understand how we can save ourselves from different kind of weather calamities. That is the work of meteorologists who help us to avoid any kind of calamities, especially when the weather is very unstable. I hope you have enjoyed the chapter and also the way we are teaching. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.